This week, we're going to look at one of the exciting features in the new release of Siphon 0.8, which is the capability to get weather buoy data from the National Data Buoy Center. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I actually want to talk about Siphon and its recent 0.8 release. One of the exciting features in this release is the capability to use the simple web service interface to get data from the National Data Buoy Center. So this lets you look at real-time weather buoy data and also about a 40-day rolling archive of weather buoy data as well, along with a lot of the additional formats and things that they have that we'll look at. So if you're unfamiliar with the National Data Buoy Center, they are part of NOAA and operate, distribute the data for a very large network of buoys, as you can see here. Some of these have cameras. Most of them have water temperature, air temperature. Some of them have wind speed, rain, a variety of sensors. Some even have sensors that measure uh, properties of the water, such as concentration of oxygen and so on. To get data from the NDBC, you can look at their web data guide. If we go over and look at that, this tells us about a relatively simple interface, uh, just a directory full of text files that you can point to and try to pull data from. These are fixed width files, but they're formatted uh, a little bit oddly in terms of just easily reading them in. And as you'll see, that it can get a little bit complicated. There are two main places to look for data. The first is the real-time data directory, which is data slash real-time2. This has about a 45-day rolling archive of data. So each buoy has a set of files. And there are up to, I believe, 13 different kinds of files for the buoys that are listed in an appendix uh, here. So you can have the standard met data, wind data, a spectral wave summary, raw spectral wave summary, and other special sensor data as well. So the hard part is you don't know which of those are available without going and looking for it. And you also have to know the buoy number. Then you have to go get that file with wget or some utility and parse it. The other place to look is the latest observations file, which is data latest obs, latest obs.txt. This is a file of the most recent reading from every buoy, and it's rewritten about every five minutes. So this is a way, if you wanted to just grab the most recent data and plot it on a map, that's the way to do it. But if you need historical data, then you have to go retrieve that 45-day file for each buoy. There's not an easy, queryable way here. They also do have uh, an archive for data older than 45 days, but we do not have an interface to that currently. So if we go and look at the real-time 2 directory, you can see here we've got station 32st0.ocean.srad, which would be radiation, that's oceanographic, .text for met. The next station has ocean, srad, text, uh, spectral wave data. So you can see there are a lot of files here, and this is a little bit of a pain to go through manually. If we want to look at the latest file, this is what we see. So we see the station name or number in this column, and it has a lat lawn, year, month, day, hour, minute of observation, and then the standard, mostly meteorological, but some wave, uh, such as dominant wave period, dominant wave direction information, with MMs representing missing data. Uh, this is also pressure tendency here over three hours. So what we've done is added an interface to Siphon that makes it easy to try to query and get some of this data. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've got a new notebook here. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is some imports. So from siphon.simplewebservice, remember tab completion saves you some typing, .ndbc for National Data Buoy Center, we are going to import ndbc. You may get a couple of warnings because of some changes that have been made in a recent version of NumPy that are coming from actually other packages in the Python ecosystem. Uh, we're just not suppressing those right now. So the first thing that I want to do is show you how to check what types of data are available for a given 
buoy. As we saw, there are about 13 different types of text files that you could potentially get for a buoy. So we're going to ndbc dot and then tab. Remember, this is a great way to see what all's out there. Uh, buoy data types is the function that we're looking for. It happens to be the first one. And if we use a shift tab, we'll see that it just wants a buoy name. So in this case, I'm going to give it the string 41002 for the name of a buoy. So it's going to go out and it actually has to query and see which of those files are available for buoy 41002. So depending on the speed of your connection and how busy NDBC is, it might take a few seconds. Now, if we look at what's in there, we see that it has standard MET data, spectral wave summaries, raw spectral wave data, uh, some other spectral wave components, and a supplemental measurements file. So we can get most of those in a parsed form. Some of the uh, spectral wave data or raw spectral wave data isn't available in parsed form through Siphon right now. If that's something that you would find useful, be sure to let us know. But we've mainly focused on the MET, ocean, and supplemental data types. But we can get this as a pandas data frame by using ndbc dot and then real-time observations. If we look at the help here, it wants a buoy and a data type. The default data type is text, which we see in the dictionary above is standard MET data. So for buoy 41002, if I just run this cell, and then I look at the head of the data frame, see that we have wind direction, wind speed, so on, uh, pressure tendency, pressure, and a timestamp. We can also look at, let's say, the supplemental file. So df is ndbc dot realtime observations 41002 and then data type is supl. And if we look at the head of that data file, we see we've got hourly low pressure, low pressure time, those aren't filled out, hourly high wind, high wind direction, high wind time, and so on. So that's the data that's in the supplementary file for this buoy. This is an easy way to programmatically go through a list of buoys, see what data are available, and get the last 40 to 45 days of that data. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these cells. I'm gonna rerun this cell so I have the meteorological observations and we're going to make a simple plot. So we've retrieved the observations. I am going to get a figure as well as three axes objects from plot.subplots. We want three rows of figures, one column, and I'm gonna make this a 12 by 10 figure. I'm going to go up here to the top as well and add import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm going to make a twinned axis. So ax2b is ax2.twinx. So this says I want another y axis sharing the same x axis as axis 2. You'll see why in just a second. Let's make a plot of first pressure. So in the first row plot here, I'm going to use time and pressure. And let's make that a black line. Then we will set a Y label and call it pressure in hectopascals. Then we will do wind speed, gust, and direction. Here's why we might want that twinned x-axis. So axis 2 dot plot, and we're going to be plotting with time. I'm going to make a plot of wind speed, the color 
color is going to be from the Tableau color palette. I'm going to use orange. We'll plot a second line on the same axes. This one is going to be wind gust. I'm going to make this one olive, which is a, a greeny yellow. And we will use the line style dash dash. Now on the second y axis, remember x2b here, I'm going to use the same x coordinate. But in this case, I'm going to plot wind direction. So this is a much different range of values, wind direction from 0 to 360, whereas wind speed hopefully is not 360. Uh, so we're going to use the second y-axis to make that a little bit clearer to read. We're going to make it a blue color. And we will use dash as the line style. Finally, we should set some labels here. This is going to be wind speed, and that is in meters per second. There are unit attributes attached to the data frame that is returned. So if you need to know the units, you can just look at it that way, or even use MetPy's attached units helper that we've talked about before in soundings to do calculations with these in a united way. And this will be wind direction. We just have one more plot to do. In this case, I want to plot water temperature. So in this case, we'll use axis 3. We're going to plot time, water temperature. And we will use tab brown in this case. We'll set a label. And if we don't have any typos, which of course we do, and now we have our plot. So we have time along the x-axis. We have pressure here going up and down. You see the daily cycle as, long as, as well as some events. And we have wind speed, so the sustained in orange, the gust in yellow, and the direction in blue on this axis. And then we have water temperature. So you can actually see that during this low pressure event with high winds, the water temperature dropped about four degrees and then recovered pretty quickly to around 28 Celsius. So next week, we'll look at pulling the current observations for all stations and making a map with those. But I hope that you found this useful. If you have any problems using the National Data Buoy Center interface or any other support requests, all of the information you need to get a hold of us is in the links down below the video. As always, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.